scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Do you know challenges are relative to the grace that confronts them? It's amazing that what is a mountain to you, there is a grace that can trivialize it completely. As soon as they meet Samuel, you can imagine, you think someone say, my God, your donkey's mistress has made the issue of donkey. Go up and let me tell you what is in your heart. As soon as Samuel met with Saul, the donkey started going back home. No prayer. An encounter with a human and restoration just happened. The donkey started going back home on its own. And Samuel said, is it not because God has anointed it to be king of Israel? Took the oil, poured it on his head. Watch this. And he told him, he said, number one, when you are going, your donkey is restored. Two, you will meet three people holding two loaves of bread each. They will salute you and give you two. As if they don't know what to do with it. Because you met a man. Three, you will come to the garrison of the Philistines. And the spirit of God will come upon you, etc., etc. And he began to speak to him. Do you know the error of Samuel that made him lose his throne? It was not sin against God. It was sin against a man. They pressured him to offer sacrifices and would not wait for Samuel to come. And the people, he felt what is there, you are a priest and a king. Let me do it. As soon as he offered the sacrifice, Samuel came and said, No, you have done foolishly. The throne is taken from you. Blind Bartimaeus would have said, Thou son of Saul, have mercy on me. A man lost his position. Because he could not discern the body. Watch this. There was another spiritual system called Moses. Moses was lifting up a rod with his hand. And controlling the victory of the people. As if they were robots. The Bible said if his hand went down. The people lost. Regardless of their prowess in learning how to fight. And when Moses was tired. I thought it was wise for Aaron to carry the rod. But they said no. It's not about holding it. We will hold your hand, not the rod. Gehazi carried the rod of Elisha and placed it on the dead body and nothing happened. Listen. This is not human worship. I know that there's a lot of nonsense going on and please don't, don't misunderstand what I'm teaching you. But when God wants to help you, it is not only God that visits you. He will send men to visit you. So the psalmist says it this way. What is man? That thou, can't you replace him? What did you hide in man that men are not seeing? What did you put in man? When Jesus was about to come to the earth, Heaven was stranded until they found a woman who made her womb available. Zechariah asked for explanation, he became dumb. Mary asked for explanation, the angel politely explained. You would think it's unfair. Watch this. So the church is called the body of Christ. Do you know what that means? That means the material dimension of the possibilities in God has been vested in his body. Now, please come, gentlemen. Can I have two more? All of you, please watch. 
Okay, you learn this mystery and never forget for the rest of your life. Come, my friend. Look at this. God distributes his possibilities across the body like mineral resources. Are we together? When you are dealing with oil, largely you deal with the south-south part of this nation. Is that true? The Igbo people are there gifted and graced for business and so on and so forth. The West with the intellectual prowess and all of that and so on and so forth and, and it continues like that. This is how it is spiritually. Watch this. This man can have the grace for favor. This man can have the grace for speed. Watch this. This man can have the grace for healing and the supernatural. This dimension can have a grace for leadership and governance. Are we together now? This is you praying, oh God, I want to rise to become a governor. You showed me that I'll be a governor and God tells you, I have given you all things. And you say, but why is it not working in my life? And what he's saying is distributed in my body is an allocation for the grace that can make that dream come to pass. Your assignment is to sustain the flexibility and the discernment to find which spiritual system scattered in the body has become the host of the grace that you need. Now watch this. There is a side effect to this distribution because the way God builds these men and these institutions to carry his grace is such that there must be a spiritual bias. Now, let's assume you are the one carrying the healing grace. If God is raising this man to be the next Belihim, the way God will deal with him, God will not teach him things about administration. God will not teach him things about prosperity and church growth. In his dealings with God, he will just be having encounters, prayer, fasting. This will be the scope of his experience. It is dangerous for him to build a ministry around this limitation as though any dimension of God that is out of the scope of his experience is wrong. Are you seeing now? Now this man, I'm speaking respectfully, I'm speaking to the body. This man can have a flourishing church. But the scope of his theology and his mentorship will be to them that if you see any administrator trivialize him, just focus on the healing ministry. He is responding to the bias of his healing, not knowing that at best he is only an effective member of the body. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, the danger, that's right, please play the strings for me. The danger here is that you will begin to see the limitation and the imbalance as this man grows. Because you will find out that the people under his mentorship will not pay attention to other dimensions of possibilities vested within the body. And a time will come to become a corporate error. Now it doesn't mean the person is bad. That limitation was intentional to make him depend on the other supplies in the body. This guy may love God, you will be healed in his church, but people can steal money anywhere because there's no administrative intelligence and because there is no grace and the humility to outsource that possibility, he may remain limited. If this guy is your only model of a Christian, all you will say is that God heals and that's all, but there is more. Are you seeing that now? Watch this. If this guy, in addition to what he has, now receives the grace for administration, added to that grace for healing, you will see the difference. The possibilities of the body of Christ, now he's receiving it. Watch this. Let me tell you this. Believe me when I tell you, when God says all things are possible, this is why. So when you go to God to pray, he will tell you, I have answered you. You can be in a meeting, shouting, rolling, jumping, and the only person that will be healed is somebody's right ear that is not even sure whether he's perfectly healed or not. Belly Hill can be teaching on relationship and marriage. Relationship and marriage, and yet somebody is healed somewhere. That means, watch this. That means the problem was not God. 
The same Lord is rich unto all. The problem was not even God's desire. The problem is being exposed to the atmosphere that carries the possibility that you desire. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. There are men on earth today who have what we call the kingmaker anointing. They never become kings themselves, but there is a grace that makes kings. Kingmakers never become kings, but they anoint kings. You will see an old man who has a church of not more than 30 people, but he can anoint you with a grace that is global. It's a grace God gave them. If you sustain the discernment. Now let me tell you this, look up. There is also a side effect to this body. And this is why many of us don't receive it. Because the vessels that represent this system are earthen. And the vessels carry a lot of flaws. The vessels carry a lot of troubles. Are we together? Elijah was a temperous man. Moses was an angry man. Abraham kept looking at Hagar. Because when his wife suggested he would have refused, that means it has been there. Remember the system of temptation. It must be planted in your heart for a long time. Are we together? Now, look at the kind of vessels. Jesus fasts and has a night with you. And look at the kind of 12 people he chooses. You fast and choose Judas. Thomas, how about Jesus? The fountain of wisdom. But it is God's system that his treasure is stored in earthen vessels. Now look up please. Let me teach you something as we pray. The mystery behind receiving from the body is hidden in the riddle of Samson. The Bible tells us in the book of Judges that there was this man very handsome man whose strength was mysterious. When Samson is about to be born, an angel comes and meets Manoah. And they ask the angel about the destiny of that child. And he says that his hair would be preserved because he would be a Nazarene unto God. Are we together? Samson grows to know this secret. He becomes a great man. He obviously was not a macho man. Otherwise, they would not ask him the source of his strength. He was a man who was mysteriously strong. With the jawbone of an ass, he would kill 3,000 Philistines. Strong man. One time, Samson was on his way to go and meet a lady. A lady again. Are we together now? And he's on his way going. And a lion just comes out. Are we together now? And Samson tears that lion with his bare hands and leaves it there. And then, the Bible says... That he returns a week later. Are we still together? And he sees a mystery. That. The bees. Went to the carcass of that lion. And deposited honey. Now. Why will the bees leave a tree. That is green and flourishing. And go inside a carcass. And put honey. And Samson noted this strange occurrence. And when he was speaking to the Philistines, he said, I have a riddle. Out of something strong has come something sweet. Sila. The mystery of partaking from the body is hidden in the riddle of Samson. If you can endure the smell of the carcass, you will still find honey there. The bees would have planted in a nice tree. I know the man of God has anger problem, but he's still a prophet. If you can endure the anger, one day he will speak over your life and turn your life around. Now, please, I'm not justifying lasciviousness. I hope you get what I'm saying. Please. But let me tell you sincerely, the best of us is still a man. And you must master the art of receiving spiritual things. Elijah was a prophet, an angry one for disrupting his worship fire bombs you look at that kind of prophet 
I mean, there's no sorry in the economy of Elijah. You come to disrupt him on the mountain. Fire comes on you straight up. Do you know what Elisha would have endured to carry that anointing? The sons of the prophet were there. I'm sure they were already bitter and angry. Stupid man. Is it just because God anointed you? And you would think God will be angry and take the grace away. It's amazing. Look at them laughing at Moses. And saying Moses married an Ethiopian woman. And while they were talking, the glory of God came and lifted. And because Aaron was operating in priesthood, he was immune. But his, his, his um, what's her name? Miriam became white as leprous. Just because they were discussing about a man and God had them. It is these kinds of men that he suffered no man to do them wrong. He even reproved kings for their sake, saying, He didn't say, Touch not my man, touch not mine anointed. And do my prophets know how? There is a backing from heaven that immunes them. Their limitation is God's business to deal with. But as far as the advancement of the kingdom is concerned, He has chosen to work with them. You will be angry for nothing, He will not change it. It's His program. Can I tell you this? Please understand what I teach you. John the Beloved was in the Isle of Patmos for the testimony of Jesus. The Bible says that, Revelation chapter 1, that I, John, was in the Isle called Patmos. Are we together? For the testimony of Christ. And then he heard a voice from behind him. And then he was in the spirit. And John is first taken to the throne room. Amazing. The first place John meets is the throne room there. And or not, not just the throne room, he, watch this. John hears a voice calling him. And John turned to hear that voice or to see that voice. And John did not see a man. He saw seven lampstands. Everybody says seven lampstands. The lampstand there is not just the spirit of God. The seven lampstands there represent the Catholic church, the universal body. In the midst of the lampstand, that's where he saw Christ. So where is Christ found? In the midst of the lampstand. In spite of the imperfection of the man of God, in spite of the limitation of the church, if you look well, you will still see Christ in the midst of the lampstand. I know there's tribalism there, but if you can take away your eyes from the carcass and look, you will still see Christ in the midst of the lampstand. He will not leave himself without a witness. Let me tell you this, go and study Bible history. Some of those who carried the greatest anointings were some of the most controversial and terrible and unwanted people. We love them because they are dead now. But those who were alive with them had a real problem. Yet you would think God would give him. We love Jesus because he's gone to heaven. If Jesus were on earth, many of us would hate him. Go and find out what he did. Jesus leaves a crusade and he's controversially sitting with a woman confirmed to be a prostitute with six husbands. Jesus. The other day, the other day, a woman came with an alabaster box. Talk to me, man. Broke it in, a, in front of his, his feet and used her hair. And Jesus was enjoined and when, listen, I'm, don't get me wrong, I'm not a heretic. Jesus was hungry. Imagine if it was your business. He went to a fig tree and just because he could not get food, he couldn't be patient. His patience not the fruit of the spirit. He cursed the tree. Imagine if it were your, your tree or your shop. You would love Jesus. Don't blame the apostles for being angry walking with him. One day he would leave the apostles and be alone. And the apostles say, we suspect you are going to run away. You have made us leave fishing. You have made us leave our wives. We are following you because there is a proposition that you will conquer Caesar and Herod. Don't play games with us. Why are you alone talking with the father? Why are you moody these days? And he said, I have many things to tell you, but ye cannot bear them now. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, he said, look, forget that thing. 
Peter said, no way. We are going with you. You will leave us now to Herod. So we will say, well, what will we tell him? You cause trouble and leave us no way. That's why they were angry. They were not missing Jesus. They were in trouble already. How will you go in the midst of this trouble and now leave us? One day, watch this. Listen. One day they got angry and the debate reached Jesus. We have left all to follow you. We will not hide this thing again. Just tell us straight to the point. What is our court in this? And Jesus said, ah, finally. Finally. When Judas kissed Jesus and they caught Jesus and it was clear that he would not defend himself. Did you see what they did? They ran away and it was not their fault. They finally confirmed their faith. And when Jesus is in the grave, Peter looks at them, John 21, I go a fishing and they say, we go with you. Let's return back to our fishing. Jesus is alive now and he goes by the shore and says, little children, have you any catch? Who is that? That voice sounds familiar. Peter now. And he says, cast your net to the right side. As soon as Peter caught fish, this is Jesus. He comes to Jesus and Jesus looks at him and in verse 15 of John 21, when they sat at table to eat, he said, Simon Bajuna, lovest thou me more than this. You walked with me for three and a half years and in 72 hours you denied me three times. Do you love me more than this? And from that time they would be the apostles of the Lamb that would love him even unto death. I said all that to tell you when the Bible says vessels are ethen, take it seriously. It is not something bad. It is something true. Vessels are ethic. Just because the woman may not be able to have a child does not mean she's not a mighty prophet of God. You may look at her childlessness to say if she's a woman of God, why don't she have a child? And miss an anointing that can change your life. Listen, the body of Christ is a mysterious entity. For not discerning it, the Bible says some are weak, some are sick, and some do sleep. Two testimonies, and we pray. I started searching for those who carried the anointings on the generals because every time I read history something within me just told me that there is a button of this for you for a generation and it was not just zeal to love God it was more than that I started searching Robert Lairdon the people who were alive Benny Hill then or T.L. Osborne, all these great men. I found a few people that I made up my mind that I will have to encounter them to take these graces because I knew that even my own life, it was not just Jesus alone that I needed to encounter. I needed the encounter with the body of Christ. I had the privilege of meeting some of these people. Some have gone to be with the Lord and I honor God for the privilege. I remember one time, you've heard me say it in my teachings. I was going to travel to the US to go and scrub the toilet of Charles and Francis Hunter for two weeks. I was not going as a man of God. I wanted to go and serve that grace. They carried levels of graces. I remember having to receive an impartation from a man of God who had the privilege to be connected with the graces that came from Smith Wigglesworth. And I said, please tell me, what did Smith Wigglesworth say? And he said, he 
told Lester Sumro, he said, when you get old, do not die with disgrace. Find young men who carry these graces. And he said, make sure you transfer this anointing before you go to be with the Lord. Though we are few, we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before. And this is the song we'll be singing forever. One more time. Though we are few, we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before. And this is the song we'll be singing forever. received that impartation my life changed in 2004 I was in Joss pursuing Red Hat Bonke desperately I saw a grace upon his life that I knew was part of the equippings for the apostolic ministry I would never forget it was a crowd of people in Joss I stood for six hours the first day the meeting was over and by the second day, I said, no, I can't go as a man of God. I was looking for something to do because I know you have to serve your way as a sign of honor into real anointings. But this nonsense that people do around, that's why we don't receive anything. I stood there for six hours. My hunger had reached the heaven. Now, remember, I've, I've seen Jesus. I would have said, I've seen Jesus. What is there? Hmm. Renard Bonke was done preaching and as soon as he finished he was going to take water and suddenly my eyes opened I saw the first manifestation of the Holy Spirit like a bird that was bigger than this building and I mean no exaggeration hovered round the crusade ground white I thought everybody was watching this and the Spirit of God took me to Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 and the Spirit of God hovered around the face of the waters. I caught an anointing that day. I caught a grace. I aligned to a system. In one of the encounters I had, this man walks up to me. Now, these encounters by no means negate the authority of Scripture. Scripture is the highest dimension of prophecy. Are we together now? Yes. And he begins to talk with me and we're interacting. And it's amazing. I couldn't even get what he was saying. And at the end of it, he turned and was on his way going. And I wanted to tell him thank you. I said, sir, please, what is your name? And he kept walking. And then later he turned to me and smiled and said, Paul. And he turned and continued going. a product of many anointings and a product of many graces I stand before you as one privileged by God to know and understand these things here's how God blesses people and God is able to make all grace are we, are we Bible students God is able to make all grace abound towards you. That is the secret of sufficiency. All grace. Not some. You can have some grace. You will encounter the grace that makes for prosperity. Add it to the grace that makes for hunger and encounter. Add it to the grace that makes for speed. Add it to the grace that makes for influence and government. And then you stand as a species of man that is strange to describe. 
you are a product of possibilities that are not affordable in the economy of men. This is why we honor men. We do not honor men just because they are bodies. We honor men because they are trays carrying something ancient. The bodies may be weak. The bodies may be young. The bodies may be frail. The bodies may not have a countenance that is comely. But behind those bodies are mysterious systems. And by a prophet, the Lord God brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet, the Lord preserved them. He starts from verse 10. Go to the same 10. Hosea chapter 12, I think. I have also spoken by the prophets. How did I speak? By the prophets. I have multiplied visions. I have used similitudes. All by the ministry of the prophets. Listen. One encounter, it is true, can change a man's life. Years ago, I paid for, was it sugar cane or something, for two women, two frail women. Mothers, old mothers. And I just said, please let me honor them. And they looked at me. Nice Christian, obviously uneducated mothers. And they began to bless me. I don't know why I did not pay attention to what they said. And one of the frail women who was trying to lose her, this thing, the time money, so that she would do I said, no, no, no. It was not more than 100 naira. And she looked at me and said, my son forever walk upon gold. Not all men are men. There are bodies celestial. And there are bodies terrestrial. Please listen to me very carefully. When Pastor Elijah called our mother, Pastor Sarah, to come here and make decrees, I know many of us, especially if you are a member of our church, just casually receive. Let me tell you the truth. If you believe in this that I've taught you, you will change your life sometimes overnight. There was a time around the world plane crashes were so much. People were dying anyhow. And I know I travel a lot. So it's not, it's not enough to just sit down and say I shall not die and stupidly start till one day I, I, I just kill myself for nothing. And I found I was traveling for a meeting in Ekiti. And as we're passing a little village I was seeing the obituaries of people. Very old people. Not in the state, I don't know, a small village. Please listen. And then I saw one, 132. We just died. I said, in Nigeria, whenever you see prevalent patterns of possibilities, it means there is a grace within that territory. When we we're done ministering, I was on my way returning back, and we told the driver, stop. And we came out was a pure Yoruba speaking place there was nobody we could identify who spoke English there I said no way the devil is a liar we must find someone eventually we found someone who could speak English in a limited way and I said I'm a man of God we are men of God and we have discerned the grace for a long life I saw 145 years obituary when we returned you call 145 a mistake you are joking this life is too wicked to survive 145 years by luck. There must be a grace sponsoring that possibility. And then we said, where is the oldest man in this place? Just want to honor him and bless him. It was clearly a Christian, a Christian area. And then they took us to an old man. Very, he didn't look so old. I'm sure he would be 120 years something too. Also. This man, they interpret for him and say, oh, this is a great man of God who was passing and he wanted you to pray for him. I thought the man would say, oh, great down. You see, those who carry these things know they have it. Though we are few, understand my song now. We are surrounded by men. 
who have crossed that river before. And then the man began to pray in Yoruba, releasing the grace for long life from the depth of his heart. Honestly, I didn't hear what he was saying, and I didn't care what he was saying. That was being put on my head. When he was done, sowed the seed into his life, honored him, and I got up, I was on my way. I wanted to greet the women I had met. And then the man tapped me and said, that one 32 year old man, this is his wife standing. I said, let's go back. I tapped, I said, madam, the Bible says two of them have become one. So if, if your husband is dead, like Abel, he's alive in you. The woman was about 120 something years. And she was standing as if a woman of 60 something. No stick, no nothing. I tapped her, I said, Madam, please pray for me. And she smiled, she said I should come. I entered a small room and I saw photos. She was the wife of his youth. They married very young, from when they could not even snap well, to when they did those pictures that you did in a dark room, until the image comes. To the last few weeks, she was the only husband of his youth. I said, Ma, I don't know whether to call you my grandmother or a ancestor, whatever it is. Please, they've prayed for us, but the grace that kept this man, please, I discern that that grace is there. The woman said, kneel down. She removed her shoes and placed two of her legs on the ground. And this woman was praying for over 15 minutes. Today, whether the plane turns like this, I sleep because the glory of God comes to confirm that his patterns have been kept. Having the readiness to judge all disobedience only when your obedience is complete. Listen now. Some of you here, listen to me. Your very parents are not just male and female. They are systems. They never went to school, but they used Akara to build a bungalow. That's not business. That is a grace. The mama never became a billionaire, but she never begged. You never saw her beg. One day, if you are wise, you can package a seed and say, Mama, this ministry doors are not opening. The highest partner I've met gave me 10,000. This is not a blessing. My destiny will not move with that kind of seed. Mama can sit down and say, My son, let me bless you. You saw me for 45 years as my son. I never beg. Don't beg. And that's it. The heavens opens over the dimension you honor. Please hear what I'm telling you. In this kingdom, you don't receive from a colleague. No. It's not human worship. When the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me, the light that came from him to me, he gave me an instruction in the latter years. And he said, everywhere you go to to minister, there must be someone in that meeting that the light that came from me to you must come upon them. I have not failed in that assignment once. Please hear me, Abuja. This is not a Pastor Elijah meeting. This is a platform for the body of Christ to have an encounter. You are here tonight in the midst of several graces, many ancient. If you have the eyes to see, your ministry can step into a dimension. You can choose to assume and remain there. We rise in this kingdom systemically. The Lord gave me an instruction that one day he would send me to God's servant, Bishop David Oyedem. And that morning the Lord gave me an instruction. He said, this is the day. Carry the seed straight to Canaan land. I took the seed, boarded, available flight. I was on my way to Lagos and to water. Sacrifice. But I discerned that he was not just a man of God. It was a spiritual system that represented possibilities. I went there with my heart open 
And when I went there, I sowed the seed, did everything, long story short. I came out, I was going to enter the car, and the Holy Spirit told me, come out, right there at Canaan land. He said, kneel down and place your hand on that ground. I placed my hand, he said, from today you have entered the overflow anointing. Not every man of God will share with you their testimonies like this. Please treasure what you hear. Years ago, I had a vision. In that vision, it was a gathering of pastors like this. And our father in the Lord, Papa Ia Deboe, was on stage. And he was eating. And from the crowd, he called me. He said, come. And people were angry and saying, where is this young man going to? And he came. And he said, sit down, let's eat. I said, no, I was well trained. I will never do that. And he said, I'm, I told you, eat. And I began to eat with him. I got up and that vision disturbed me. And I wrote it for many years. Last year, I had the privilege of being alone in his prayer room. And I said, Lord, the covenant, the dream and the vision that I had, it is time for that grace, whatever man to. See, my brothers and my sisters, please do not ignore men. I know people have abused this thing. I know people have made merchandise of others. I know people have manipulated others. But can I tell you the truth? It is true that God uses men to bless men. It is true that God uses men to lift men. No man takes this on of himself. Your heart can be open this evening it will be a worthy way to have started your year hallelujah our time is gone and we'll pray but before i leave this place i'm praying that something from heaven through man that can change and turn a man's life Jesus, drought in your life, that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise, I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain